My dear friends, as we gather today, I want to invite you to reflect on something that is perhaps closer to our hearts than we often realize, the Holy Spirit. Have you ever experienced the weight of knowing you've hurt someone who loves you deeply? Think about that feeling. Now, magnify it and imagine how the Holy Spirit feels when our choices grieve Him. Scripture, in Ephesians 4 verse 30, gives us a heartfelt plea, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. This verse is not just a distant theological statement, but a personal cry from God Himself. We often forget that the Holy Spirit is not some abstract force, He is a person, deeply invested in each of us. He has feelings, emotions, and an unbreakable love for you. He knows every corner of your heart and still chooses to dwell within you. But just as we can bring joy to the Spirit's heart through our faithfulness, we can also grieve Him with our actions, omissions, and attitudes. And today, I want to talk about five specific ways we break the heart of the Holy Spirit and how we can begin to walk in a way that pleases Him. The first way we grieve the Holy Spirit is through our sins of commission, when we knowingly do what is wrong. These are the moments when, deep down, we are fully aware that what we are about to do is against God's will, yet we go ahead with it anyway. We cross lines we know we shouldn't cross. Perhaps it's a word spoken in anger, an action taken in selfishness, or a decision made out of greed or lust, in those moments, we feel that subtle distance between us and God's presence. It's as if a shadow falls over our hearts, and the warmth of the Spirit's closeness is replaced by an uneasiness, a heaviness that tells us something isn't right. My friends, the Holy Spirit is so tender, so loving, that even our smallest acts of disobedience grieve Him deeply. Imagine for a moment a friend who has been nothing but kind, loving, and faithful to you. How much more does it hurt to know you've wounded them? But here's the beauty of our relationship with the Spirit, just as we can grieve Him. We can also bring Him joy. Every act of faithfulness, every step of obedience, no matter how small, delights His heart. C.S. Lewis once wrote, If we let him. He will make the feeblest and filthiest of us into a creature dazzling, radiant, immortal, pulsating all through with such energy and joy and wisdom and love as we cannot now imagine. What a glorious truth! The Spirit within us seeks to transform us, but we must be willing to let him in, to yield to his guidance, and to walk in step with his ways. The second way we grieve the Holy Spirit is through the things we fail to do, what the Bible calls sins of omission. James 4 verse 17 says, If anyone, then, knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it. It is sin for them. How often has the Spirit prompted us to act, but we've resisted? Perhaps He's nudged you to speak to someone, to offer a word of encouragement, or to extend kindness to a stranger but you hesitated. Maybe He's called you to spend more time in prayer or dive deeper into His Word, yet other distractions took priority. These moments of hesitation may seem small, but they break the heart of the Holy Spirit because He knows the beauty that could come from our obedience. Each time we fail to act on His promptings, we miss an opportunity to bring His love into the world, to be His hands and feet in someone's life. I want to speak to those of you who may feel paralyzed by fear or doubt. Sometimes, we confuse our own anxieties with the voice of God, and we worry that we're not hearing Him correctly. But the Holy Spirit's voice is not one of confusion or fear. It is gentle, steady, and filled with love. When we quiet our hearts and listen, we'll know when He is leading us to act. Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let the noise of life drown out His whisper. Trust that He will guide you, and when you feel His nudge, step out in faith. The third way we grieve the Holy Spirit is by ignoring His presence in our lives. This may sound simple, but how often do we go through our days without acknowledging the Holy Spirit, who is closer than our own breath? 
He is with us. Abiding in us, yet how easy it is to become so consumed by the busyness of life that we fail to recognize Him. In Exodus 33 verse 15, Moses said to God, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. Moses understood the importance of God's presence. Without it, nothing else mattered. And yet, how often do we rush through life without stopping to recognize the Spirit's nearness? We wake up, go to work, handle our responsibilities, and before we know it, an entire day has passed without a single thought of Him, oh, how this must grieve the Holy Spirit. To be so close to us, yet so often forgotten. He longs to be acknowledged, to be invited into every moment of our lives. Don't let the pace of life cause you to miss His presence. He is with you in your moments of joy, in your moments of sorrow, in the mundane tasks, and in the grand moments. Take time each day to pause, to listen, to simply be aware of His nearness. Another way we grieve the Holy Spirit is by allowing division among us as believers. Jesus prayed in John 17 verse 21, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. The Holy Spirit desires unity within the body of Christ, but how often do we allow our pride, our ego, or our personal preferences to cause division? We get offended, we hold grudges, and we let small disagreements fester into bitterness. And all the while, the Holy Spirit, who dwells in each of us, is grieved by our lack of unity, now, let me be clear, there are times when division is necessary. If someone is teaching heresy or living in unrepentant sin, we are called to stand for truth and holiness. But more often than not, the divisions we experience are not over fundamental issues of faith. They are rooted in pride, in our desire to be right, or in our inability to forgive. The Holy Spirit is kindred within each of us. He loves the Spirit in your fellow believer just as He loves the Spirit in you. When we allow division to take root, we are not only grieving the Spirit within ourselves, but we are also grieving the Spirit in others. Unity is a mark of maturity, and the Holy Spirit longs for His Church to be united in love, not divided by ego or offense. Finally, we grieve the Holy Spirit when we live in fear or doubt, rather than in faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. When we lack faith, we are essentially saying to the Holy Spirit, I don't trust you. I don't believe that you are able to handle this situation. Whether it's fear of the unknown, anxiety about the future, or doubt in God's provision, a lack of faith grieves the Spirit because it reveals a heart that is not fully relying on Him, but my friends, hear me on this, greater is He who is in you than he who is in the world. The Holy Spirit within you is stronger than any fear. Stronger than any doubt, stronger than any obstacle you may face. C.S. Lewis once said, The Holy Spirit will not be shut up in one part of a man and leave the rest to look after itself. He wants the whole man and will not rest until he gets us through and through. The Spirit within you longs to empower you, to fill you with courage, to strengthen your faith. But you must be willing to let go of fear, to stop relying on your own strength, and to trust fully in the One who holds your life in His hands. When you step out in faith, you bring joy to the heart of the Holy Spirit, and you experience the fullness of His power working in and through you. So. How do we live a life that brings joy to the heart of the Holy Spirit? Rather than grief? It starts with love. Not a love motivated by duty or fear of punishment, but a love that flows from the knowledge of how deeply the Spirit loves you. He is for you, not against you. He desires to see you grow, to see you flourish, to see you live a life that reflects His glory live each day with an awareness of His presence. When you feel that nudge to speak or act, do it without hesitation. When you sense His conviction, repent quickly and return to Him. 
When you see division creeping into your relationships, choose forgiveness and unity. And above all, walk by faith, trusting that the Holy Spirit is more than able to carry you through whatever life may bring. My friends, you are not alone. The Holy Spirit is with you, guiding you, comforting you, and strengthening you. Let your life be a reflection of His love and His power, and you will bring joy to His heart. And in doing so, you will experience the peace, the joy, and the fullness of life that only He can give. Let's close with a prayer, asking the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts, to guide our steps, and to help us live in a way that pleases Him. Amen.